to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're here today to proclaim the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. 2,000 years ago, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, born of a woman, born under the law, to deliver those like me and you who are in bondage under the law. And through this, we can now receive eternal life. Oh, man. One thing you must understand is that the Bible says all have sinned mm -hmm. and fallen short of the glory of God. That's right. Every one of us, none of us is exempt. If you told a lie, it makes you a liar. This is called sin. If you've ever, um, uh, you know, if, you, if you've stolen before, my friend, this is means you're a thief. It's called sin. So none is exempt. We all fun, fall under the wrath of, Je yeah. of God. Yeah. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh. Because the Bible says that, that he demonstrated his love towards us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And by Jesus Christ being that sacrificial lamb, by Jesus Christ being the one who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary, we now can step into uh, right standards with God. Yeah. Because Amen. Jesus Christ is the mediator between us and the Father. And through his sacrifice, we can receive life. Amen. Through, his, through his death, we can receive eternal life. And today, we're here to proclaim that the gospel is not just for the black man, not for the white man, Asian, a male or female, but it's the Bible says it's for all mankind. And you also can receive this wonderful, gracious gift that Jesus Christ gives to everyone who would call upon the name of Lord Jesus. Yeah. Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. Amen. Yes. Today oh. is the day that you can receive that salvation. Yes. yes. And so, two weeks ago, we were here at Speaker's Corner and we destroyed that ridiculous um, issue when that um, Muslims raised about Ishmael being, uh, 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 being part of the covenant or being uh, part of the lineage of uh, or the, uh, the, the, the people of Israel being called to be the children of God. We destroyed that. And this week, we're also going to destroy another uh, misconception that Muhammad is the same prophet like Moses in the, in, in the book of Deuteronomy 18 verse 18. Yeah, we're yes. going to have fun with this because uh, we're going back to the same scripture that Muslims love to use, Deuteronomy 18, 18. And like Godwin was saying last week, we liked, we destroyed this whole claim that they make that somehow Muhammad is descended from Ishmael. But now we're going to go to the other part of the verse that they appeal to. And it's this, let me read it for you. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, your brothers. Meaning that the prophet God will send will be like Moses. So quite a lot of Muslims don't bother with Ishmael, actually. But what they do bother with is they try and draw out these parallels of how Muhammad is like Moses, more so like Jesus. Therefore, it must be Muhammad that is the prophet as prophesied in Deuteronomy 18. Now, let's look at some of the arguments that they use. Uh, this comes from Jamal Badawi. He's a very famous Muslim uh, Dawah person, uh, very, very influential. Uh, and this is, this is his argument that he makes for why Muhammad is like Moses. And he says these things. He says, Moses had a normal mother and father. He says, Moses married and had children. So did Muhammad. Moses died from natural causes. So did Muhammad. Moses brought the law. So did Muhammad. Moses' leadership was accepted. So was Muhammad. Moses had victory over his enemy. So did Muhammad. Therefore, Muhammad must be the prophet like Moses. Alhamdulillah. Godwin, are you ready to take shahada? Are you convinced? Absolutely. I, totally convinced. Um, I don't know why I wasted so much time. <laughs> Well, oh. I, I would not be convinced just yet, okay, okay. Okay. because we are going to examine those claims. So let's dig into them a little deeper for now. Let's think about the first three to start with, and let's just draw out um, some of the problems. So the first one is, Moses had a normal mother and father. 
Now, hands up, anybody here, Godwin, I don't know about you, did you have a, a normal mother and father? Did they conceive you in the normal way? Yeah, 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 they're both yeah. human beings. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now let's think, uh, Moses married and had children. Anybody here uh, did get married and have children? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, that's me. Hey, maybe I'm the prophet in Deuteronomy. Uh -huh. Maybe it's you. So, okay, so I'm convinced. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Moses died from natural causes. Now, I don't know, I'm not dead yet, uh, nor are you. The fact that you're standing here means you're not dead. But let's think, uh, who can we think of in history who uh, was conceived in the normal way, who uh, got married and had children, who died of natural causes? Anybody want to throw out some names? Talking about billions and billions of people. Loads and loads of people. Yes. Ronald Reagan, Abraham Lincoln. I don't know if you had kids, but you know, maybe. Yeah. You know, hey, this could apply to so many people. So, part of this issue is that actually these criteria are too broad. But you know what, Mohammed? Um, I mean, why did I call you Please. Mohammed? Sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry, Godwin. Sorry, Godwin. That's all right. It's fully too sensitive. But anyway, anyway uh, let's be kind. Okay, it's important to be kind. And let's say, for the sake of argument, that our Muslim friends, yes, their criteria are broad, but they're right, right? They're right. You know, Moses um, had a normal mother and father, so did Muhammad. They're right. It is true. Yeah. Moses uh, got married and had children, so did Muhammad. That's right. Uh, Moses died from natural causes, so did Muhammad. Well, that's up for debate. But anyway, we'll get there. Let's just say that, okay, they're broadly right. The problem with this criteria, Godwin, not Muhammad, is that they're actually stressed beyond the point of credulity. You know how you can just stretch something so it becomes basically meaningless? Now, to, to understand what I'm saying here, we're going to dig into these criteria a little bit more and we're going to examine them and show you guys how these criteria simply don't hold up. They simply didn't do nothing to prove that Muhammad was actually like Moses. So what's the first of those criteria? Let's go, let's go with the first criteria. So, the first criteria is... Um, normal, this one. No, okay, so uh, Moses had a normal mother and father like Muhammad. Hmm. Right, so well, what can we say about this? Yeah, Moses had a normal mother and father like Muhammad. Well, interestingly, they do share some uh, similarities because we know that uh, neither of them were brought up by their natural parents. We know that Moses um, was actually brought up. Hi, guys, come and talk to us. <laughs> Moses was brought up um, by Pharaoh's daughter. Don't forget, he was put on the Nile and then picked up by Pharaoh's daughter and brought up in Pharaoh's palace. And we also know that Muhammad wasn't brought up by his mother and father. We know that Muhammad's father died in infancy, and we know that his um, mother died also, sorry, before he was born, and we know that Muhammad's mother died in infancy. So neither were brought up by their natural parents. However, let's think of some other parallels with other people in history that might be more fitting. Let's think about Moses. So what big event happened that meant that Moses had to go on the Nile in the first place, Godwin? Well, yeah, I mean, um, when we look at some of the, when we look at the biblical text and the biblical narrative, we find that um, in terms of uh, Moses and Jesus Christ as well, there were some similarities, especially in, re in regard to... Um, if you can remind me, what, what happened? So, yeah. what happened, basically, Moses was put on the Nile because he was in a situation of persecution. That's correct. You know, the Hebrew boys were being killed. Yes. And in order to save her son, Moses' mother puts him on the water and he's, um, you know, we can see that God's hand is really on him because he's rescued by Pharaoh's daughter. Um, and who else? Let's think about this. Who else uh, in his infancy is in a situation of persecution? Absolutely. And that's where we come back to Jesus Christ yes. again. When he was being persecuted, uh, when it was the time of persecution, and what happened is um, they uh, his mother, his mother Mary and Joseph, his father, they took him, he took him to Egypt in fear of this, um, to, in order to avoid this persecution. And so there again, you can see the similarity already with Moses and Jesus Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So yes, Muhammad was taken in by his wider family, but there's nothing particularly noteworthy about that. Yeah. There's actually a far stronger parallel between Moses and Jesus. Right. Okay, what's the second criteria? So, so second criteria is this, Moses married and had children. Hmm. Now let's think about this. Did they both uh, marry and have children, if you like, in the same way? 
Was that attitude to marriage the same? Um, I think it, it was quite different. I mean, what we do know of Muhammad is that uh, is that Muhammad had you know, numerous wives. He had, he had multiple wives. And um, but Moses had, you know, Moses had, although he had two wives, you would see that he brought the law and um, and you see if you can just elaborate on that. Okay, bit. Yes. so here's the thing. It's a bit of a hot topic whether or not Moses had one wife or two. Yes. Let's say for the sake of argument, he was in a, a polygamous uh, marriage, yes. which we know that God doesn't like, doesn't approve of, but he permits for, t for a time in the Old Testament. Um, but let's say he also, Moses also had the law, was given the law of God that says, do not commit adultery. Now let's think, let's be kind again, Godwin. Let's be kind to our Muslim friends and say, for the sake of argument, adultery, I don't believe this, I also don't think this is biblical teaching, but to be kind, for the sake of argument, we're going to say that um, adultery means uh, anything outside of your marriage or marriages. Okay, so if, you're, if you've got two wives, you can have sexual relations with those, but just no one outside of that. Did Muhammad have sex with people that were not his wives? Well, yeah, we know that. We know that he had several wives, but also we know of um, Mary the Cop, who was, uh, who was he was a Jewish slave, mm -hmm. correct? And you know, I think she was a Christian, actually. She was a Christian, yes. And so, um, this was this was outside of marriage, and of course, you know, we know that he ended up having sex with her, sleep with her, and she wasn't his wife, so he committed adultery. Yeah. So, and also we know, for example, from Surah 424, that Muhammad permitted having sex slaves, and we even know from that Surah uh, that he encouraged his followers to have intercourse with their sex babes in the presence of their husbands. Now, let's think, let's think. If our Muslim friends want to say that Muhammad is a prophet like Moses, why on earth does he violate the law that Moses came with so spectacularly? I don't think Muhammad sounds like Moses to me. But let's continue. What's, what's the next criteria? Okay, so Moses died of natural causes. And, uh, yes. Yes, and then our friend say Jamal Badawi says, Muhammad dies of natural causes. Does Muhammad die of natural causes? Ah, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> what, is Islamic, what is Islamic tradition? Yes. Tell us about the Let's death of Muhammad. Let's look at this one. Okay, so, Can you read it for us? All right, so I'm going to read from a Jewish from Sayyid Bukhari 44... Oh, sorry, this is actually um, Abu Dawud 4498, sorry. Okay, so reading yeah. from here, yeah? Uh, free from the top, okay. yeah. So it says here, a Jew, a Jewess presented Muhammad at Kaaba, a roasted sheep, yummy. With, which she had poisoned. Not so yummy. <laughs> the Apostle of Allah ate of it, and the people also ate. He then said, lift your hands from eating, for it has informed me that it is poisoned. Ah, the lamb informs Muhammad that it's poisoned. A talking lamb, a talking lamb bone. Awesome, carry on. Really? The Shabi al Bara, the Amura, Al Nasri died. So he, the Prophet, sent for the Jewess and said to her, What motivated you to do the work you have done? She said, If you were a prophet, it would not harm you. But if you were a king, I would rid the people of you. The Apostle of Allah then ordered regarding her and she was killed. So hang on, Muhammad orders the killing of yeah. the woman who poisoned her. Carry on, Godwin, if you don't mind. He then said about the pain of which he had died. Wait, what was that? Of the, the pain, pain of yeah. which he died from poisoning. That's right. I continue to feel pain from my morsel which I had eaten at Kaiba. This is the time when it has cut off my altar. That's awesome. You know when it says that's cut off my awesome? Because that reminds me of Surah 69, 44 to 46, which says this. And if Muhammad had made up about us some false sayings, we would have seized him. This is Allah talking by the right hand. Then we would have cut from him the aorta. Even the Quran is condemning him as a false prophet. Anyway, this proves that no way did Muhammad die from natural causes. What's the next criteria? This criteria is Moses brought the law, but why did 
Moses brought the law and apparently Mohammed brought the law. <laughs> so Moses brought the law and Mohammed brought the law. But let's think about this. Why on earth? Why on earth? Okay, if Moses brought the law again, Muslims want to make the argument that Mohammed was a prophet just like Moses. Why did he break the law that Moses brought rather than confirm it? Why did he break it so spectacularly? And let's think just I think of a couple of examples in the ways he broke it. Uh, he didn't keep the Sabbath. Uh, he changed the holy day from the Sabbath to Friday. Why does he feel like he has to do that? No, come and talk to us. Talk to us. Why don't you talk? tell us? Tell us. Okay. Um, obviously, thou shalt not kill. He kills. Uh, you shall not commit adultery. He breaks the law of Moses. He doesn't confirm it. You know, why on earth would he be like me, Moses, if he spectacularly breaks it? But let's give you one particular example from Deuteronomy. Muslims, if you're going to bring us a verse from the Bible, please read the rest of it because it will show you very, very clearly that Muhammad is not the prophet of this text. So we read Can that? you read? Yeah, what does it say in God's name? Yeah, please. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire. The practices of divination in the fire. Who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells. Or who is a medium or who casts spells. Cast spells. Or right? who is a medium or spiritist or who consults the dead. Okay, so yes. casting spells is forbidden. Not even not necessarily among prophets, but not among any of the people of Israel. This is wicked, this is evil, this is not something that the people of Yahweh should do. But what does Muhammad say about spells? Do you want to read this hadith? Yeah. Okay, so we're reading um, from Yes, from uh, um, Muslim 26, number 5457. It says, Awuf Malik Ashjab reported, we practice incarnation. Incantation. Incantation, sorry. Uh, not incarnation, imagine. 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 Yeah, yeah. But what's an incantation, Godwin? Casting spells. There you casting go. spells. We yeah. practice incantation. Please continue. Yes. In the pre Islamic days, and we said, Allah's messenger. What is your opinion about it? He said, let me know what your incantation um, had and said, there is no harm in the incantation which does not smack of polytheism. Oh, uh. wait, so he said, no, no, no. Moses said incantations are bad. Is that what he said? No, he said, hey, there's nothing wrong with it as long as it's, if it's, it's, if it's smacks of polytheism. There's oh, wrong with it. dear, 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 dear. Yeah, Muhammad gets it very wrong it. again. That's so unlike. He doesn't want to do what Moses said he should do. He really isn't like Moses, is he? What about the next one? Moses' leadership okay. was accepted. All is right. that true? And Muhammad's leadership was accepted. Therefore, you know, Muhammad must be like Moses. Well, well, no. I mean, we know that Moses was challenged several times throughout, you know, their journey throughout the wilderness. But in particularly when um, Aaron and his sister Miriam challenged Moses, uh, Moses' leadership. Mm -hmm. But the issue is, but what we see here again is God's divine intervention. Because even though they challenged him, what happened? Uh, immediately, she, she was sm um, she, she received leprosy over her body. Yeah. And so you could see that God was protecting his leadership mm -hmm. and uh, affirming Moses as the leader of Israel. That's right. Okay. Uh, that's right. And Aaron prayed for her, and then Miriam's leprosy was healed. So basically what happens is that God, Yahweh, intervenes directly yes. in that situation to confirm that Moses is a leader. Now what happens when Muhammad's leadership is challenged? Uh, let's think of an example. There was a Jew who didn't accept him as a prophet, yeah. who didn't like what he was doing to the other Jews, uh, and who rejected him basically. His name was Kaab bin al-Ashraf. And because of his uh, lack of, you know, he didn't submit to Muhammad, he didn't, he didn't submit to Islam, what happens? Muhammad has him murdered. Murders. He has him murdered, right? This is not a case of Allah strikes him down. The earth doesn't open him up and swallow him up as a confirmation directly from Allah that Moses, that, that Muhammad is his man. No, instead, we see something very sinful, very human, that basically uh, Muhammad just goes and has him murdered. Yeah, so, so, so just to add on to that, essentially, it would seem that the only people that accepted Muhammad's leadership were the Muslims themselves. Yeah. But anyone who challenged is it, you know, as you said, example would be you'd be murdered. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, terrible. What about Moses, the next criteria? Moses' victory over his enemies. We've yes. kind of talked about this a little bit as well. Basically, Moses, uh, when he 
uh, succeeds, if you like, for the Israelites is very clearly with the demonstration of God, of Yahweh's power directly. The main example of this, I think, is parting the Red Sea. When Moses holds out his, his staff, you know, God says, you do not need you know, I will fight for you. You need only to be still. I will fight for you. You need only to be still. And the waters part. And then Moses and the people of Israel go through the Red Sea. Um, but again, let's look at how Muhammad was successful. Was that, did Muhammad do anything that involved these kind of miraculous signs, like the parting of the Red Sea or going or getting manna from heaven, anything like that? No, we don't see any of that. In fact, uh, we, we, we'll come on to it in a, in a little while, but we see that he didn't come with any signs, but Allah didn't give him any signs or any miracles. Mm -hmm. And so, in, in that sense, you know, we can see again God's hands, God's presence, the divine work using Moses, whereas Muhammad had none of these things. So, he gained victory by just killing and slaying unbelievers and all these other things. Yeah. Yes. And that brings me on to our next part of the argument, which is basically what Jamal Badawi and so many Muslims get wrong is actually when they make up these silly criteria, you know, getting married and having children, dying from natural causes, when they make up these silly criteria, these are just man-made criteria. They're not actually going from the scripture and saying, Okay, what does the scripture say is distinctive about Moses? Let's see what the scripture says is distinctive about Moses. And what would you say, Godwin, are Moses' two uh, distinguishing features, unlike the other prophets? Yeah, two of them. First of all, we know that Moses directly spoke to God. Right. And, you know, and it's affirmed both in the Bible when it says he spoke face to face and also in the Quran when it's also in the Islamic sources. But um, so, um in the Quran, of, yeah. In, in the Quran, right. So but second of all is he came with signs and wonders, he came with miracles. Mm -hmm. Um whereas again Muhammad had no miracles, no signs and wonders, mm -hmm. nothing like that. And so, you know, it really all of this flies against Muhammad as an authentic prophet. Yeah. yeah, and you know what, Let's, I really don't think we can emphasize this enough, right? Because the Bible says clearly that Moses and Yahweh spoke directly to each other. Yeah. But not only that, okay, if Muslims want to say, oh, your Bible is corrupted and throw it under the bus, the Quran says this as well. Can you read that yes. um, surah for us, please? Surah 4, 163 to 164, it says, we have sent the inspirations as we sent it to Noah and the messengers after him. We sent inspiration to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, to Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon, and to David. We gave the Psalms of some messengers. We gave, we gave the Psalms of some messengers. We have already told thee the story of others. We have not, and we have not, and to Moses, Allah spoke direct. And to Moses, Allah spoke direct. It's even in Islam. But not only that, guys, it gets better. Because we also have Aisha, Muhammad's favorite wife, saying in this hadith that if Muhammad is claiming to have spoken directly to Allah, anyone saying that is lying. They are lying. I'm not going to read the hadith now, but if you want to look that up, it's in Bukhari, volume 9, book 93, number 477. So it couldn't be clearer. How does Muhammad get his revelations through Jibril, or as we like to say, uh, probably a, a demon disguised as Jibril? But the, fact, the point is he has an intermediary. He doesn't speak to Allah direct, but Moses and Yahweh communicate directly. Um, okay. But anyway, what we like to do now, we want to wrap this up, don't we? Yes. And we want to say that actually... Uh, that the, the prophet in Deuteronomy 18 cannot be Muhammad. We've demonstrated that again and again. He's actually as far unlike Moses as probably as it's possible to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Bible has already answered the question of who this prophet is. And who is that? The Easy question. is Jesus Christ. The Lord and Saviour himself. Yes. That's who he is. And we have got, we're going to go through them really quickly. Just here, we've got 10 snappy reasons why the prophet is Jesus Christ. And Muslims, you need to reject the fact that you need to reject Muhammad altogether. You need to reject this argument that he's in the Bible. And you need to bow the knee and repent and believe in Jesus. But let's go through those 10 reasons yeah. super quick. So really quickly, first one, in John chapter 5, 46, it says, if you believe Moses, Jesus says this, if you believe Moses, you would believe me. Well, he wrote about me. 
Christ himself states that Moses wrote about him. How clear could that be? Yeah, number two we have Christ being the Son of God knew God the Father face to face as did Moses because God, because Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. He is in the bosom of the Father, it says in John 1. There is nobody closer. Of course, Jesus has that absolute direct relationship with his Father, just like Moses did. Right, and then we look again at Exodus 7, 7 and Matthew 4, 1. We speak, we look at the preparation for their ministry. God uh, prepared Moses 40 years for, for, to prepare for his, mis um, for his missionary, sorry, for his ministry. Whereas again in Matthew, you see that Jesus' ministry was prepared for for 40 days. And so again, you see the similarity that God prepared both these men for their ministry. You know, um, 40 years for Moses, 40 days. For, um, for Jesus, and you see the similarity again. Reason number four, we know that when Moses went up uh, the mountain to meet with Yahweh, he came down and his face was shining, he was radiant. We also know that when Jesus was transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration, he was also made radiant. There's another parallel. What Absolutely. about number five? Number five, again, we have Jesus Christ himself performing greater miracles than, than Moses. And so we see, again, both had signs and wonders, both had miracles. And Jesus Christ was able to perform these signs and wonders such great, so, so great that you know people would look at him and say, "Wow, you know what? Surely he must be from God." Number six, we know that Moses interceded on behalf of Israelites when the Israelites had sinned, for example, with the golden calf. We know that Moses uh, interceded them with um, to Yahweh on their behalf, and this intercession was accepted. But now we have an intercessor uh, who lives eternally, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what about the next reason? Yes. First, number seven, number seven speaks about Christ, like Moses, is the mediator of, of God's covenant. And so we see that, you know, um, Moses brought the law and he was the mediator between God and the people of Israel. And so we see that Christ today is the mediator between God and mankind. And we see that in the book of 1 Timothy. So we see clearly that the similarities once again between God, uh, sorry, between Jesus and Moses. Reason number eight, yeah. reason number eight, Jesus, Moses liberated his people from slavery in Egypt. Jesus Christ liberates us from the bondage of sin. We have their both liberators. Muhammad never liberated anyone from anything. Absolutely. And then again, we, number, number nine, we see that Christ, like Moses, was an Israelite. He was an Israelite and of course he was from the um, tribe of Judah. Um, Moses, of course, was a tribe from Le uh, of Levi, but you see that they were very similar. The prophets that God, um, they're both from the covenant people from of Israel, the basically. People which were, which were Israel. And Muhammad is an Arab, not a covenant tribe at all. Absolutely. And the last reason, the last reason is basically yeah. that the apostles, the Bible has already answered this question. We don't know. Christians, we don't go around wondering, going, man, who is that prophet in Deuteronomy 18? How are we waiting for him? Who can it possibly be? Because Jesus was awesome, but maybe there'll be somebody more awesome coming. No, we're not even asking that question. Muslims have had to bypass and basically chuck the whole New Testament yeah. under the bus in order to jump to Muhammad from Moses. But the Bible has answered this question yeah. because we have scriptures telling us directly that this prophet that Moses is talking about is actually Jesus Christ. Would you mind reading for us, Godwin, Let's this this scripture, Jones, Acts 3. Acts 3, we'll start with Acts 3. Yeah. Okay. So we just this one here. Yep, yeah. okay. So let's look at that. Now fellow. Uh, so, yeah. okay. so it says here, Now fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance and did your leaders, but it is this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer, repent, repent then and turn to God, so that, so that your sins may be wiped out, and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him, even Jesus. Mm -hmm. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised. Mm -hmm. Long ago for his holy prophets, for Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. From among your own people, you must listen to everything he tells you. Every, anyone who does not listen to him, Will be completely cut off from the people. Thank you. So it's quoting, yes. isn't it? It's quoting that scripture yes. about Deuteronomy 18 and it's applying it to who? No other but Jesus.
In fact, Muslims again, we're going to finish with this. Muslims, be careful when you go to this scripture because you will prove too much about Muhammad. You will prove too much because not only will you prove that he is not the prophet, uh, he's not prophesied in the Bible, but he is prophesied in a completely different way because what does it say? Oh dear, sorry, losing ourselves. Okay, it says in that same passage, Deuteronomy 18, 20, about a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods is to be put to death. Did Muhammad speak in the name of Yahweh? No, he didn't speak Oh, in the name of so according to the Bible, Muhammad should be put to death. Anyway, Muslims, this is our last appeal to you. Not our last, we'll make more, but please. Your prophet is not in the Bible. Your prophet is not a prophet at all. According to the Bible, he should be put to death. You need to bow the knee. You need to repent and put your faith in the only one who can save you, the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah.